Hi, welcome back to Nessa's Nook. Today I'm going to go ahead and add more food to my pantry. What's going to happen is these are going to end up being freeze dried once my freeze dryer stops acting stupid. And um, this is going to be part of the Every Little Bit Challenge, Every Bit Matters Challenge. And um, I was gifted uh, a total of six. I did these the other day in the chopper, but I didn't want to set them out on the freezer trays yet because I knew most likely my sister over at City Girl Homestead was going to give me more. So if you look down here, I've got three more bunches of celery and I have uh, four peppers. And I'll clean the machine and be, well, I'm ready to clean the machine. I'll do the celery first and then I'll go ahead and chop these peppers up and get those on trays to go in the freeze dryer here. So I like smaller vegetables. And um, I don't know for sure if you can see this very well. This is my seven quart Insta, or Instapot, seven quart KitchenAid stand mixer. And like you have watched in a few of my videos, this is my absolutely most favorite attachment for the KitchenAid I have. It gives you the really small, if you've not already watched some of them, it gives you the really small bits of uh, vegetables. Now I'm gonna be doing some cucumber, I'm gonna be canning some tomatoes today too, and all that's gonna be part of this video. But I don't like my cucumbers really small, and I don't like my tomatoes. Well, this. I bought this because I thought, oh geez, I can, you know, throw my tomatoes in there because I like uh, petite diced tomatoes. That doesn't work like that. So what I'll do is I'll show you how this works and I'm going to drop this down a little bit so you can see how fast this shoots out if you've not previously watched my other videos. And I'll go ahead and turn this on and get this going. <laughs> that was that fast enough for you that was three when well, I should have I'll just eat this one that's three stocks of celery now obviously I'm not gonna put this much on a tray because I already have some in a bag over here and um, what I'll be doing is I'll show you the video once I get this done and I will um, show you how many trays I end up getting there'll probably be one tray of peppers and probably three trays of celery and um, I'll get that done and I'll be right back. I'm gonna cut up these um, green peppers here. All right, I cut up these green peppers, so I'll go ahead and do the same thing and this will be the batch of green peppers here. <laughs> some time. So 
So, anyways, like I said, it's not that I don't like my um, manual choppers. It's just that, you know, to, to chop up a whole bunch of peppers like this or the celery, I can actually, with this chopper, I can actually chop up like a whole wash bin. I mean, as long as it's pre-cleaned and stuff like that. I can chop up a whole wash bin full of, um, let me move this all the side. Now this will drip some water, some juice there for a minute. Um, but as I was saying, is it actually, um, you, I could chop up a whole like wash bin full of whatever I'm doing, carrots or celery or whatever have you, in shorter time than it takes to, you know, even get them cleaned. So it makes it really, really nice. Um, they are not the cheapest thing. I mean, that did, well, I did buy this probably uh, four, maybe five years ago now. It's It's been a minute. But um, this has worked very well. I use it not just at harvest season. I use this all the time, all, all throughout the year for whatever. If there's any sales on any vegetables or, or um, things like that, I'm always, this is my first go-to. Now, I do have over here, she's sitting here. Let me see if I can. This is my 13 cup uh, KitchenAid, okay? Now, I really like her too, but um, where this is like, I want to say, I, the only thing I can say is like, I don't know if you can see this. It's like Taco Bell tomatoes. Now, as far as onions and celery, celery I can do either way, it doesn't matter. Um, carrots I could do either way, uh, but definitely onions and peppers, I like those to be on the smaller side, so I'll always use this. I do actually, yes, I have a backup in my garage. <laughs> so I actually own two of these because if something happened to this, I would just absolutely be very, very upset. But um, it does save a lot of time. I mean, like I said, it's, it's, it was about, um, I want to say $149 or $159 like four or five years ago. I looked recently and it is like $200. Now, it does come, let me grab this real quick. It does come with this box. And it comes with all these different blades that you can um, french fry, you can slice, you can... Um, shred and stuff like that so that makes it really nice because then it's not just just a chopper that I use mainly it for now I do like to use this um, for shredding things but I noticed the other day when I was doing my um, uh, yellow squash it took forever now I don't know for sure because my motor is strong in the seven quart but I think I could have actually shredded it way faster in the um, KitchenAid that I could have with the um, with this one, the 13 cup, excuse me. So, I mean, you have to pick and choose your, your battles of which one works better. I'm very, very grateful and thankful that I have a husband who um, backs my love of gadgets. Um, he just bought me a uh, new crock pot because it's getting crock pot season and I keep seeing all these recipes and now yes my instapots and, and stuff does the slow cook feature but it's just the two of us so I don't need a big crock pot and I wanted to start doing some crock pot meals but I'd like to have the food spread out more and um, this one he got me I'll, I'll be making a video of it pretty soon here with something being cooked in it but um, it makes it nice that, you know, he doesn't complain about my love of gadgets and um, it just makes it very nice. I let him have his electronics and his tools, that whatever makes his life easier. Because he gets fed, he doesn't care. And if it makes me happy and I, it's not like I just willy-nilly and say, oh honey, I want, you know, a $200 attachment for my KitchenAid that already cost, you know, $600. I want it, you know. No, I have to make sure before I do pay the expense, even though it makes it easier, I have to make sure that this can do a multi-purpose thing because there's nothing worse than having um, 
one thing that just does one thing, you know, like just like even like a bread maker, for example, that's pretty much all it does is do your doughs and your breads. To me, you know, I can do my dough just fine in my KitchenAid. So and I bought um, a bread pan, which works very nice. And so um, definitely I'll, I'll go ahead and get these trays around and um, my lids are being used because like I said, Fifi, my freeze dryer, um, she's acting up today. And we've got uh, five trays of hatch peppers I've been trying to dry since Friday and it just keeps throwing air. So we got her on thaw again and, and we'll, we'll get that going. But the freeze dried, um, if you watched any of my videos, the freeze dried peppers and the onions, I mean, I've dehydrated for years. I love dehydrating. Um, it's, it's a great way, especially if you can't afford the expense of a $4,000 unit or $2,200, depends on how, what size you buy. Mine was like 3,600, I think, but I got the large with five trays and, um, it's nice if you can sit there and because a lot of times I don't pre-think. Now I'm back to work, so it's it's a little bit more difficult to get meals around. And I'm working, so I'm not really thinking, oh, dinner, 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 dinner. So what I'm going to do is when these gets freeze-dried, then I go ahead and I just put them. I like to store mine in a um, half-gallon container. I do store a lot of stuff in, my, in Mylar, but I really do like the glass, and I vacuum seal down that. But it re reconstitutes seriously within like a minute or two. I can throw them on my pizzas. I can throw them on whatever. And it makes a very nice addition to your um, your canning and, and the stuff that we're doing all right now. But I'll go ahead and get these on the trays, and I will be back. Okay, there's the five trays. Uh, we've got the four trays of celery and the one of green peppers. And yes, you will be able to tell. Now, some of you might be wondering, what does this product look like when it's freeze dried? Unlike dehydrating. It does not actually shrink down. Yes, it takes the water out, obviously, because that's the object. But this is what it looks like now. These are white and purple pepper or um, onions put together. This is what the cel celery looks like, and this is some red and yellow peppers mixed together. So that works out very well, but I'm going to go ahead and get this other chopper out so I can show you this and get my tomatoes ready to get canned. Now I do have quite the mess going on today, but I'm going to just show you a little bit and then I'll bring you back um, when I'm actually ready to do this. So a lot of people in this day and age right now, um, because of everything that's going on in the world, and a lot of people is like, you really, really need to seed save. Um, I have never done it. I am going to start this year. I did take the um, seeds from the green peppers. I am going to sit here and take out as much seeds as I can because when I do can my tomatoes, I can them with um, the skins on, so that's not a big deal. But what I'm going to do is I will be cutting these all up like this and um, taking the seeds out. And what I will do is I'll be drying the seeds. Now, I don't know what kind of tomatoes these are because they're going to be from all different tomatoes. But I don't think it's going to matter when um, when things get rough and a tomato is going to be a tomato. You're not going to be that picky. So I'll go ahead and get these cut up. And I will come back and show you uh, what I'm going to do as far as getting these all canned up and get them ready for the shelf. All right, I got all those pretty much deseeded. And that's the seeds and then I got this from my compost bin but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start I this should be enough for it's gonna be enough for at least two pints and what I'm just gonna do is get out my instapot max and because it's just not enough for um, to get out my water my my steam can or anything so what I'm gonna do is I have the one cap full of of uh, lemon juice in there and you have to use store-bought lemon juice I guess because the lemons are not um, like they used to be so what I'm going to just do is I'm just go ahead and I was going to get my other chopper but this one I already chopped my cucumbers and stuff up for lunch so I just rinse that out and that's what I'll be using that's what I'm saying as far as that chopper with the, with the KitchenAid it is so much faster, and I was really, really hoping that 
it actually did the tomatoes because I, I was like really excited and I put my first tomato through there and I'm like, oh, epic fail. So I'm going to dump this here and just going to get this last one on here. Let me get my funnel. Sometimes you think you're prepared and you're just so ill prepared. So you just take the lid off this and take that off. And what you're just going to do is go ahead and dump that in your jar. And I'm going to still debubble it and everything like that. And yes, it's too full. I understand that, but I don't have my spoon out. I'll take care of that shortly. And then you just have to just put this back together and chop more. Now, I do have one that's actually a little bit bigger. And that's what I use when I have bigger batches. But I figure I would do some seed saving off this batch because this batch here is very small. And seed saving is very, very, very time consuming. And um, if you're ever wondering, I haven't done it previous, like I said, I've not done it in previous years. I've really never even did a really great job of um, growing tomatoes. My intentions were well this year. I came home from the hospital in March. And I'm like, oh, great, you know, I can, you know, start my tomatoes and stuff. And I don't know for sure if my heart just wasn't in it yet or I don't know what the deal was. But my tomatoes, they, they just become long and lanky. And I just have to do a little bit more research, you know, get with people that know more what they're doing. Because I really don't like buying tomatoes from a greenhouse. I just, I really don't. I prefer to have my own because there's nothing like canning your own stuff. And you grew that seed and you did all that stuff. So let me get this in this other jars and I'll be right back. All right, now I got the three going here. And I'm gonna go ahead and debubble. And these might be a little bit under. A lot under. Um, maybe I'll just take that one and only just do the two, and then just save those tomatoes for my salads this week. Unless I cut up that other tomato that's not quite ready. Why don't I do that? I'll cut up that other tomato that's not quite ready, and then that way I do have the three pints. I'll be right back. All right, and I did that other tomato, so that makes it a nice one inch head space. I mean, I'm sure it could have been a little bit um, more in each jar, but it will be fine. So then what you're going to do is go ahead and wipe your rims and what you're feeling for is any nicks or anything like that. So your jars will actually seal because there's nothing worse than spending all your hard time doing this if your stuff doesn't seal. So I don't warm up my lids. Um, and I'll go ahead and get these on just fingertip tight. And in a minute I'll go get my canner because I have to make room here on my, on my island. And then I just usually like to shake it a little bit. Make sure maybe some of the stuff is out. I don't know if that's really the right way to do it. But sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And I'm going to go ahead and clean up that uh, chopper and I'll get my cucumbers done. All right, now I'm going to do the same with my cucumbers. Now, usually, I would like to pull out my 13 cup because you're just like, you throw pretty much half the cucumber and zip, and it's gone. But I've already got so much stuff I'm doing today. Sunday is usually our very, very busy day. Um, laundry, yard, <laughs> you know, canning, cooking, whatever. And I don't know for sure if I put on there or not, if I told you guys. But the seed saving, um, I was following Chelsea over at our Urban Homestead, and she's explained that very well. And this way, maybe you can learn more from her because she's actually done it longer than I have. And um, what I'm going to do with some of these cucumbers, well, some of them's going to become my cucumbers for my salad for lunch this week. But I am going to freeze some on a tray. And what I'm going to do is put that in the freeze dryer because if that does work well during cucumber season, 
because things are only just getting more expensive, that I am going to actually freeze dry some because they should be nice and crunchy on my seal, which I think would taste really good. I mean, obviously, I'd have to have my husband taste it once it got out of the out of the freeze dryer. But um, I think that would be a nice thing to see if, or you know, I could put it in my water and drink it or whatever if it if it's successful. So I'll go ahead and I'll put these for my sales this week, and then these will actually go on a tray. And um, I'll bring you back once I'm actually getting these in the canner. All right, that's what I thought. <clears throat> It is like 25 minutes, so I go ahead and I go ahead and put these in. This now, this is the Instapot Max, where you can actually pressure can. And I didn't want to get out my steam canner and have to warm up my tomatoes and all that. I just that's just too much for me to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the canning button. I'm gonna go down to 25 minutes. I don't want any venting and I don't want to keep it warm. So I go ahead and I just hit start. And then what's going to happen is the pin's going to come up. It's going to go ch -ch 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 -ch, like a normal one would. And then um, you'll process for the 25 minutes. And then once this cools down, I'll bring this back and we can go ahead and end this video. All right, this is done and the pin is down. So I will bring you over to the Instapot. They have a towel laid out. Okay, I swear I heard the pin go down, but it didn't. So it is a safety feature on these Instapots, by the way. It will not let you open it up until it is actually, the pin is down. So always, when you pressure can, pressure cook, always open your lid away from you. And as you can see, all that steam, and that steam will burn you. And go ahead and pull out. Now obviously, like I said, these weren't all the way full. Once these cool, when I wash them off, I'll shake these down. It's not going to be perfect, but like I said, I knew I didn't have enough to get through this anyway. So that's this video on this. Um, thank you very much for stopping by. If you liked what you see, please like, share, subscribe. And um, I'm always trying to put out new videos on different stuff all the time. And I really do appreciate you guys stopping by and um, watching my videos. It really does mean a lot. And if there is anything that you want to see me um, cook or can or freeze dry or uh, whatever, please let me know. I mean, I'm always up for trying new things. Um, it's all good. So definitely thank you. And you guys have a very blessed and wonderful Sunday.